without doubt, um, those who know a little bit about this, the history of this land, the ownership of this land started back, I think, in 1959. That is when the first chair was bought at the, at the cost of credible by these wazes, and some who have already left. Now, Mukiangaria, how was it? How are you, sir? What do you want? Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come Ua, ya chamba, tichamba ya, ya Dr. William Samoa Ruto. Awa, na ite hiyo. And remember, we were in Moranga the other day with the ite two year olds who had again been accused of belonging to Mogeki and they were in, a pro in the process of committing a felony. This is a trend of harassing people from our Kenya. <coughs> the said piece of land, I only want to say this, Moi regime try to take it away from this He did not succeed. Benjamin Kulei never took over possession of that land. Ruto now thinks that he can take it away from this people. We want to assure him he will not take it less of our dead bodies. We will be there for these parents. And I want to thank my colleague lawyers and especially the younger people who have now taken it upon themselves to come and defend the community. We are under attack. And don't be cheated. We are under attack. And Jen Kehara and colleagues who are in Bunge, you are elected by these people to defend and protect them, not to abandon them and go to the highest leader, because that's what you have done. It's a very shameful thing for those of us who have never represented the Oh, there will be many of us speaking. So we, again, as indicated by my line and friends, we are here to stand in solidarity with the people of the Fifi. And most importantly, and this I want to go tribal and local because all politics is local, with the Kikuyu community who are being persecuted. For record purposes is that we want to say that this land plays most 100 to over 140,000 Kikuyus who are now facing eminent eviction from their ancestral land. Fortunately, the name of the person evicted, evicting them was mentioned by none other but the member of parliament for Naivasha, Honorable Jenny Kihara. He did mention that the individual who will be one of the highest office in this country is the one who is executing and perpetrating these evictions. And therefore we are saying, because we are in the new era of the new constitution, we shall come in and stand in the gap of betrayal. Our people have been betrayed by the leaders that they elected, but fortunately enough is that they gave birth to people who are able enough to stand in the gap of betrayal. And as such, and as previously indicated, we shall go to any length and trend to make sure that the individual's rights are protected and that somebody will not elevate himself to the higher towers of uh, stamp that, uh, just stamping and saying that I have it all. We want to tell you, whoever is grabbing that land, because Jerry Kihara mentioned you, that we will not stop until justice will reign and flow like fountain and flow like river. So we are simply saying that we shall not relent until justice is done to these individuals. We want to thank one member of the county assembly, most sincerely, uh, Honorable Jane Yetuko. For record purposes, is that she has been able to stand with the people of Ndavivi. When cowards who are elected through UDA are chickening out to come and speak the truth and good licking, Honorable Jean Gituko, a UDA member elected, has been able to come and stand with, him, with her people. And that is the spirit that we want to speak to, and that's the invitation we invite. Thank you. As you can be able to see, we were a number of advocates representing these residents of uh, the big farm who occupies a parcel of land that uh, they tell us is 1,500 acres. That parcel of 1,500 acres, according to them, is part of a bigger parcel of land of about 5,600 acres that is currently being fenced out and people being evicted 
in order that uh, a land grabbing scheme may be completed. According to the accused person, the only reason why they have been charged in this matter is to ensure that the local community on the ground and the residents and their families will be unable to oppose the land grabbing scheme that is going on. To that effect, we have made uh, several applications in court for site visit that my colleagues will talk something about it, together with the issue of the validity of the charges, because we believe that the company that they say is a complainant is actually a company that uh, owns land away from them and is only being used here to pretend that it is a complainant because the true complainant that uh, has caused them all this grief, taken them all over Kenya with various remands, cannot be disclosed in the chat sheet. And therefore, pursuant to the rights of the accused person under Article 50, we have made the necessary applications that all this information be provided for. The Honorable Magistrate has kindly allowed that application that this information be provided. And of course, the, some of the issues are issues that will be dealt with by the High Court. And he has done well to reduce the bond for those who are unable to raise it, I believe, to about Kenya shillings, 20,000 cash pay, and we are all happy for that. I believe the rest of my colleagues, because I have another case in the High Court, will brief you in the other matter. But we are happy uh, that uh, this is a matter that uh, affects the entire Ecuador people. We are disappointed by some of the statements that are being made by the local leaders in Ivasha, abandoning their people and trying to say of our land that has been contested for more than 30 years, they are betraying their people. It is in the light of that betrayal that we say it as lawyers from Mount Kenya juries, Gema Wako, and all other individuals of goodwill that we are going to stand with the people who are being violated. The constitutions of Kenya, the Bill of Rights, will have to be taken seriously by all of us, which we do, and the rights of everybody will not be violated while Kenyan lawyers, and this is the mandate of every lawyer <coughs> under the Law Society of Kenya Act. And that is why our Emeritus Chairman, President of the Law Society of Kenya is here to repeat that very important issue, that the Bill of Rights is something that all of us as advocates swear to ensure that we defend. And it is with regard to that mandate that these people who cannot even afford lawyers, we are going to give them pro bono services so that they are not evicted from their homes through illegitimate police harassment and through illegal prosecutions. These are things we used to see in the 1990s, but Mr. Jeremiah, Honorable Jeremiah Pioni is here. He will be able to tell us more about it. Alongside the kind of work now that my learned colleague, Mr. Ndekwa, is had to be running around all over Kenya, trying to stop very many lethal fires that are being lit over the violations of the rights of ordinary people. This is the return of Kenya to the dark days. We oppose it, but we shall do that through the necessary means provided in the constitutions of Kenya. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the press, we have, uh, as a group of lawyers, today pro bono represented uh, persons who are accused of malicious damage property uh, and the ongoing evictions around the BBL. We are concerned, first of all, that uh, despite the offence alleged to have been committed in Naivasha, that these persons and the accused persons have been brought to Nairobi, and we understand that there is another group uh, that uh, is supposed to be charged in Kajiani. We see that as uh, an abuse and an departure from the normal uh, criminal process, and we attribute that to an intention to violate uh, the rights of the accused persons, and it is because of that threat uh, that uh, we have uh, joined uh, today with other lawyers to ensure uh, that we give them pro bono representation. To the true owners of this case, we want to tell you 
people that are as advocates, we are prepared to challenge not only this criminal trial, but the intended acquisition of the property that is in dispute. But that will be challenged in court, and we are going to ensure that we mount serious and credible court action to challenge the ownership of that land. To the politicians around the area where this land has been grabbed, we want to say that your duty is to your people, so that you took office to protect and advance the interests of your people. It is not yet too late for you to retrace your steps and to come back to your conscience and to stand with the people that elected you into office and are now being persecuted and harassed and their property being grabbed by the very, very government that they voted for and they put in place. But the political question, we will leave it for the individuals to handle. But we urge you to come back to your conscience and to stand and defend the people as they agitate for what is legally there. And to the people in Namibia, we want to give you our commitment as lawyers that we will stand with you, we will walk this journey with you, and we will mount uh, cases and we will challenge all these illegal actions that are being taken against you and we are going to ensure that ultimately you will stand and you will face the land where you have come from and you will say that irrespective of the fact that perhaps you are going against the high and mighty of this country that the constitution of Kenya is there to protect you. That is our commitment to you and we want to assure you that we will take all the necessary legal action to uh, see that uh, come through. Members of the press, uh, my name is Mwenda Njari. I'm one of the councils on record on behalf of the two persons. The reason I've called this Mze who was harvested in my clan by the name of Boge Wanyaki, he is a 90-year-old man among the accused persons who are alleged to have destroyed the land in the Bibi. I secured his release Sometimes last week, having paid the cash bill of 2000 then, through the intervention of Dr. Jimmy Wanjege, who paid that cash bill and was released from industrial area. The other 28 will not be able to raise. We are happy to report that at least the court has today revised that cash bill from 50 to 20,000. These are the kind of accused persons who are alleged to have destroyed that particular property. I wonder which strength he has to destroy a throne. But the most important thing is that there is a title deed of where my clients exist. The title deed dated 26th of March 1974 of 1,004 acres. That is a suit property that they have existed. And we are wondering which new title has been produced by the alleged new owner. Without any fear of contradiction, on the 8th of March 2024, the Honorable Jane Kihara Area MP made pronouncements that that land is now owned by none other than Dr. William Samoy Ruto. Silence means consent. It's only fair and just if the alleged new owner has instruments of title to furnish us and we know on what basis he's alleging that he has a title, whereas we have an already existing title which has been found to be a legitimate title at the ELC court in Naivasha. Secondly, I wish to mention that those actions which are happening there, they amount to offenses of grave concern based on the numerous people being affected who are 140,000 who are facing imminent threat of eviction. And I wish to emphasize that the BBI case pronounced itself that presidential immunity does not lie when the person of the president engages in a civil wrong. In the fullness of time, we may consider to bring civil proceedings against the alleged new owner 
for purposes of damages to these persons who have suffered. Because that veil does not exist when you engage in civil enterprise, which now are arising to a civil wrong. This is the embodiment of the persons facing eviction, and it's only fair. And I'm happy that in the fullness of time, the court will grant us a site visit. We go to see that land that is alleged to have been uh, owned by the same person. Thank you very much.